screwed up, made a mistake, sabotage your entire correctional career on your first day, or maybe you did something that your super insightful and engaging field training officer had a problem with. Oh no, whatever shall you do? What are your options? Did you quit? Walk away? Go <laughs> work the window at Zaxby's? After all, maybe corrections isn't for you. <laughs> Or maybe, just maybe, we can take a breath, reassess, and use whatever you allegedly did as a teaching moment. Hi, I'm William Young, correctional officer, author, and frontline apologist. And one of the awesome things that I get to do is connect with correctional officers everywhere. Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Florida, Maine, Montana, Ontario, Australia. <laughs> Holy smokes! It's so freaking awesome to network with veterans and newbies. Fielding your questions, comments, and concerns. It's an absolute honor for me to be a part of your correctional journey. A big piece of what I do here is offer information. Assistance is to be a sounding board for you. To be a cheerleader for you. And today I want to let you know that it's okay if you screwed up. If you feel like you screwed up. If you feel overwhelmed and anxious because day one didn't go as well as you wanted it to. It's cool. There's not a lot we can't undo. So if you didn't suitcase in a syringe full of heroin, if you didn't have inappropriate relations with a member of the population, you're probably fine. So what's the issue? The concern. Can we use what you feel you did wrong as a chance to learn? Probably. So I got this email from a new R officer who is now questioning their choice of career because of a conversation that they had with an inmate on their first day of OJT. Questioning your career? <laughs> Join the club. I question my choice of career every single day. <laughs> okay, I'll be serious. Apparently this person during an interaction with an incarcerated individual felt like they gave up a little too much personal information. They said that they were talking about something obscure and meaningless and then all of a sudden, BAM! They let something slip! And they were like, SHIT! I'm doomed! Ruined! <laughs> How can I continue? Can I even do this? Should I even do this? So let's start there. I can assure you, promise you, most of us have messed up. <laughs> A majority of us have said something that maybe we shouldn't have said to someone that maybe we shouldn't have said it to. So know that. You're not the only officer to do that. And depending on what was said, you're probably okay. But now you know what you're up against. Master manipulators, professional con men, and women. I don't want to leave out the ladies. But now you know. You have to be extremely mindful of what you say. Every conversation that you have is a way to mine information. To fill you out. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't talk to anybody ever. I'm just saying that when you engage, you have to be in control. Make sense? I'm not going to dive into specifics or give examples because every facility has its own tone. Its own culture. The population of every prison and jail is unique. And so when you speak, be aware. You know what? I will give you an example of an interaction that I've engaged in like a million times. When I'm walking around, you guys are doing rounds, right? Good. When I'm walking around and I see someone reading a book, I usually ask them about the book. I'll say, is that a good book? And, and they'll say, fuck off, CO. <laughs> well, probably not. Well, maybe somebody will, but most of the population probably won't. So I'll say, is that a good book? And then they'll look awkwardly at their cover and say, yeah. And then I say, what's it about? And then they ramble off some quick synopsis if they don't want to talk. But if they do, if they're a reader, readers usually want to talk to other readers about the books that they're reading. Well, I just ask them for a quick rundown if I haven't read it. But if I have, I sit and chat about the book for a minute and then I move on. There's a million reasons that I do this and a lot has to do with rapport building, but we can save that for another time. But here's the difference. Here's where we can be friendly, but not friends. What are you reading? The Gunslinger. Oh, I love The Gunslinger. Stephen King is like my favorite author. Yeah, what part are you on? The face of my father part. Oh, yeah. When you finish, let me know what you think. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's what I do versus what are you reading? The Gunslinger. Oh, I love The Gunslinger. Stephen King is like my favorite author. Yeah, every year my wife buys me his latest release for Christmas. Yeah, what part are you on? The face of my father part. Hell yeah! Hey, after you read that one, read The Drawing of the Three. Yeah, that's like my daughter's favorite book in the series. She says Jake reminds her of her brother, but I disagree. A little taller than Jake is. I guess he has to be to play tight end. <laughs> Do you see the difference? <laughs> and I hope so. One helps you build rapport and gauge the attitude and atmosphere, and the other puts you in a predicament. What did I give up in the first example? That I read books? That Stephen King is my favorite author? That I've read the same book that that inmate is reading? Not much. 
But what about the second example? Yeah, that one was bad. Probably don't want to voluntarily feed the population information about your family. Now, they'll probably learn about your family over time, or assume because of your age that you're married and have a family. But let's make that information as hard to come by as possible. Where was I? <laughs> your freaking head is spinning. Look, if you slip up and give up some personal information or get a little too friendly with the felon, you don't have to quit. You can recover. Unless you shelled out your address and your phone number and where you get drunk every third Thursday, you can recover. Just put a gabosh on the talking. Draw the line. Address the request for a conversation with a big fat no. It isn't fun, but it has to be done. So yes, you can recover. Recoup. Build back better. So don't quit. Don't get discouraged. Give it one more day and see what happens. We've all been there. We've almost all done that. And the majority of us ended up okay. I hope that helps. If you like this video, if you found value in this video, straight punch that little like icon. And then check out this video right here on the most common mistakes that CEOs make on their first day. Or this video on freezing instead of fighting. All right, guys, that's all I got. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon.